listening to DTF Radio. DTF Radio. Number one. You are listening now to the Vero G Spotlight Radio Show with your girl, Vero G, on DTF Radio. Live Wednesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. The loud mouth in the motherfucking building. BK, stand up. The champ is here. Holla, 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 holla hear me, hear me. With Queen Bridge Bridge on DJ Shot. It's your time to shine. Download the app on Google Play and Apple App Store. Vero G Spotlight Radio Show presented by W Y K. And you and the problems of Bobby was kids. Sun is so big, I know that you're scared. And trust it's okay, I know you've been there. I know it ain't fair, cause you're fighting hard. A body like lip on that back of ball. Still haunt your dream, still haunt your soul. You trying to relax, you don't have control. Problem. Come at you like a goblin Take you out in the worst way Watch as you fade away You don't wanna fuck with me Cause I'ma put you in your place Knock you off your ass in disgrace Keep talking shit, you piece of shit I'ma tap you like the feds Put you six feet without no head Blow you up like the world trade. We gonna take over. Even with no get big fucks, you a fucking mistake. Suck my dick, you little trick. You a fucking bitch. To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem. To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem. To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem. Twenty racks on it, bitch, you fucking with a killer To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem Bitch, you fucking with a killer Killer Got no loyalty in your blood You a fake ass nigga, you a dud Fight the hand that feeds you You straight up fucking trash Switch up like my bloody pad. Why you hating, you little fag? Gossip like a little bitch. Go wash your pussy, you stink ass bitch. Wash up, wanna be rapper? You a tranny, a fucking cipher. A knockoff, that's what I see. A legend that you will never be. Keep making trash with those beats. Yeah, go far, only in your sleep Cotton, not money, but only sheep Way to go, to steal somebody's beat To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem 20 racks on it, bitch, you fucking with a killer To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem To these niggas, I'm a motherfucking problem when I'm done with you, they say, who are you? He got no rhythm, no rhythm too. Just a clown trying to impress you. He's like a gimmick. Someone who likes to mimic. A puppet who got no limit. Only a display and exhibit. Watch out for these hidden snakes. Prey on you, but only you a flake. You gotta watch your, gotta watch your back. Cause you gotta be attacked. 
Watch those subliminal messages You try to be distant Cause all I got is us say Me and my team say Fuck you Me and my team say Fuck you To these niggas I'm a motherfucking problem Facebook, we're and also on the Ustream live right now. Yes, we're here. We've been here. What? Let me ask Chef. Hold on. How long have we been out of here? Like what? Um, since March. Damn. So it feels like reborn again, right? Yeah, this is like the rebirth right now. That's right, baby. That's right. <laughs> so let me let me introduce everybody. Host Bro G, the co-host the Live Mouth on my right side, and we got DJ Chef on the ones and twos. The one and only QB's future. That's right, that's right. Now, we have an amazing guest uh, on us, our, our side, across from me. We'll have him in a few minutes, guys. Uh, he is an amazing friend of mine and martial arts um, student and more and more. We will talk more about that. He goes by the name of CJ the, T- CJ the Terror. So stay tuned. We'll have him soon in the artist spotlight segment. So, um, yes, indeed. That's right, baby. Now, you know how we do this, right? Yes, I know how we do it. All right, Chef. Before we go, let them know your social media where they can find you. Okay, to find DJ Chef, go to djchef.qnz on um, um, Instagram. Yeah. Also, you can find me on Facebook. <laughs> Excuse me, it's been a while since I've been here. I know, I know. Find me on Facebook. Um, just put in Darius Harris, yep. and um, my Facebook thing will come up. You will see my logo. Yeah. Again, again, it's uh, djchef.qnz on Instagram. Um, I'm on all platforms. Awesome, awesome. That's what's up. Yeah, so right there. That's the man right there. Yeah, well, we got CJ in a minute. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> let me start. Uh, real quickly, just find me on the IG Diva and Diamonds. Um, also, you can just find me on web- my website at www.brogmusic.com for all his content. And, of course, the loud mouth. He's back in the show. It's been a minute. He's seen in, in online. But let them know your social media and all that good stuff. Yes. <laughs> He's dying to say Brooklyn, that. stand up. <laughs> Stand the fuck up. Ooh, ooh, the boss ooh. is in the motherfucking building. All right? You haven't heard from me in a while, but I am back louder and meaner than ever. Oh, God. <laughs> the former WTF World Heavyweight Champion and soon-to-be two-time champion. You best believe that. Venom. Ooh, but scary. I am back in the motherfucking <laughs> building here, DTF Radio. It took hell, fire... And uh, and all that shit, but we're back here. <laughs> all right. Saw that in one night, right? <laughs> and fuck zip car, by the way, at MTA. Oh, that's another long story. That's all right, so I'm back. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, you know what I'm about. I'm one of the dope, the dopest uh, videographers in the game right now in the streets. Um, I'm working with amazing artists like Quan the Bully. I got five on it and banned banned from society. And I got some new uh, shit coming out soon. Some real fire shit with new artists, so stay tuned for that. Jam Pie Media, we make hits over here. You, uh, my my social media, I guess, Instagram Captain Clutch eighty, uh, J M Empire Media, um, Twitter Real Big Time J, uh, my website uh, J M Empire Media dot com, J M Empire Media dot com, and there you go. I'm everywhere. All right, so let's get straight into it. We're into the topic segment, right, Chef? You ready? Topic segment. Yes. But before we get into the topic se- okay. segment, shout out to my man, DJ Who You. Oh. We just celebrated his birthday. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my whole DJ Happy team. Happy birthday. Shout out to my whole DJ team. That is Gatekeeper DJs, Empire Fleet of DJs. Shout out to everybody. All right. That's what's up. All right, all right. So let's get to the topics. Ah, it was juicy. Yes. It's juicy, okay. All right, so um, the first one is, as you know, for the months that happened prior before us going back here alive now, the Black Lives Matter situation, right? It's been really crazy and everything. Now, um, I want everybody's input on here. I'll start with Chef. Um, how, do you, how do you think the Black Lives Movement would change our society from now on? Let's 
So I'm shocked. Um, yeah. I think the movement will change. Yeah. Um, it's not going to change rapidly, but I believe that um, I'm starting to see changes, but it's not. It's 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 going to take some time for things to actually change. Yeah. For 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 the better, but longevity, I I believe is is good. It's positive, and it's what we need right now yes, in sir. New York City. Exactly. Okay. Uh, how about you, CJ? Why you why, why not? You you're on the panel. <laughs> like I said, uh, this Black yeah. Lives Matter. I think the changes is gonna. Uh, uh, I think um, when it comes to the Black Lives Matter, the changes is coming. Like I said, that like what Dave Chappelle said, you know, the youth is finally standing up and they're listening to the voices and yeah. and they need to you know need to stand up. That's and right. I think you know we've been sitting back for so long and now we have a whole movement. It's, it's not just. African Americans, you have everybody united. We come out all over, all, all over the world. So right. this is a major movement that's is happening right now. Changes are coming, you know, with the statues and everything else. So you know, change is coming. We just gotta give it time. That's and right. it also starts with our youth. Yeah. It starts with our kids. That's right. You know, that's we 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 they, the kids look up to us. So we we as role models as adults. Whether you're African American, Latino, you know, uh, black, white, whatever the case may be, it starts with our kids and our youth. Amen. So they're gonna mimic what we do. What we do, they follow suit. That's what I'm gonna say. Amen to that. Amen. I think we have to like implement the, the history. Yeah. Tell them the real history. Do some real in-depth research and tell them about what the Confederate of uh, Person was yeah. the first right, right. all that happened and transpired within the 401 years and break down the history and not let it get from a book and do some research and to let your kids know what's going on. Amen. I think that's what we this society is going on right now. They're looking for guidance and we need to give them that guidance. That's, that's right. right, that's right. Amen, amen. I'll just put a quick input on that and then I'll ask the Lama, uh, uh, the Lama, what's wrong with you? I need coffee anyway. <laughs> No, okay. Um, I feel like you guys are on point with what you mentioned. You know, we our gener I just mentioned that I think to you or somebody else. The our youth is our main point right now. Yeah. That's the, that's the next thing we gotta instill that for all the youth. Listen, we're gonna go through things, but eventually there is gonna be a change. You know, that's why we're doing the Black Lives Movement. And even though you know things happen, you know, but down the line we have to continue on and fight in the right way. Protest. You know, don't loot and riot. You can't do that because you're ruining your own community by doing that. Exactly. Definitely. Exactly. Definitely. So I just feel like that point, and I have to do, ask something else, Chef. You know, I want to go with this. Now I made a book a while back. I I'm, I'm gonna say it again. Forgive me if I made the title a little bit sensitive. I understand, but I did out of respect. I respect you guys and your opinion, and I decided to change the name of the title. So furthermore, it will be soon, re, re soon on Amazon and stuff, and and will be seen. So you guys get a copy. And I appreciate that. So that's how to say for that. All right. Yes. Yeah. Clap it up. Clap it up. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. Oh, G Dog. Let me say. G Dog, you listening? <laughs> yeah, that's my boy. Right yeah, I was like, wait, he's around down here. Oh, that's cool. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next topic, guys, is the coronavirus. Like, you know, it's been going on for like months now since March. I got um, a lot to I got something to say okay, about that. Okay. I got yeah. you. Okay. So now you think it will ever go away? Because we're now in phase two right now. So what do you guys think about that? Uh, your opinion, Go ahead, Jeff. Right now, we may be at phase two, but yeah. we might get pushed back to quarantine. Oh, God, no, I'm not. And the only reason that. why I'm saying that is because people are not listening. Yeah. They're not. And if you look, if you look at other states, yeah. Ohio, um, I think they said California, yeah. um, a few other states, um, the, the, it's spiking back up. It's true. It's spiking back up, it's and true. I have a feeling that even though it's in the state, yeah, you know, it's you you can't you, you can't cut. I mean, you can't cut people from going state to state. What you're gonna true. lock down each state, yeah. you know? And it's 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 they saying it's starting in the bars and everything, you know? And and we're supposed to be another surge here in New York. Oh God! So all I'm gonna do is say please. Please wear your mask, wash your hands, 
follow the rules. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm going to add to that. Please wipe your ass. <laughs> I had to say that. Oh, I had to because, you know, there's some funky shit you be seeing in the trains. And the I pocket. know a few people out there that definitely need to wipe their fucking ass. Oh. And, and, and wash their motherfucking mouths. <laughs> motherfucking problem. Need yeah, because they're going to have a motherfucking problem when they, when they, see, when they see us and our crew. Uh, sh- 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 how about you, uh, CJ? Yeah. I think, like, we look at it right now, I think... As New York City, there's, there's um, Governor Cuomo, a yeah. bunch of applause to him because he's doing everything in his power. Yeah. To Yo, he's, a, he's good. He's he good. He's trying yeah. everything in his power to get, you know, protect New York City residents. Um, I've been seeing the front line when it comes to COVID-19. And um, I think we, we, we might be going back down to lockdown, which, I mean... I don't, I don't want it, man. I don't want I'm it. I'm done. I'm done with the lockdown. <laughs> um, a lot of my friends are losing their businesses behind this. And um, wow. we, we, we can't have the lockdown, man. We, we need, everybody needs to respect one another. If they send a mask on, mask on. If you yep. need hand, hand sanitizer, everything that is out Follow there. the rules, Follow the man. rules. Follow exactly. the rules. Because, exactly. you know, having somebody that, that's in the medical field and hearing all about these, these um, coronavirus and hearing how it's going on. And, and also, in New York City shelter systems, you know, they put them in different hotels and stuff, and we try to quarantine them as well. But oh, follow the rules and regulations, man. Just try to listen. You know what I'm saying? You can't live in a bubble forever. Exactly, exactly. I Amen. agree with you, man. Amen. I agree with you. Awesome, awesome. I mean, this is interesting. It's, it's been going on for like well, a, couple, a couple of months now. Yes. Um, And I feel like, you know, a lot of people, like you said, they don't take it seriously. And we really need to just step the A game. And listen, you guys don't want to be locked in the house another three or four months, right? Be like, it's like jail. You can't go out because it's, it's curfew at 8 p.m. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I need to get some fresh air, man. I'm gonna go crazy. But what I'm afraid of, exactly. what I'm afraid of, yeah, is this weekend. <laughs> this weekend is Fourth of July weekend. Oh God! Now, you listen, know, people, listen, the fireworks. Listen, listen wait a minute. Wait yeah. a minute. Seriously. Yeah. This weekend is gonna be a big test That's because right. the beaches are open. They're saying that we can cook in the parks. Mm-hmm. What does that say? Show some gathering. Coronavirus. Show, 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 <laughs> look, show the, show, <laughs> social gathering. Yeah. That's what that is. That's now, we're going to find out right now, yeah. this weekend, yeah. how many people is going to wear masks, how many people is going to stay six feet away. I'm right watching now. for this Instagram. You know what I'm <laughs> and then we're going to know in the, the week after next or the two weeks after next if it's going to spike right back up. That's, you know that's going to happen, bounce yeah. of what was going on. You know, that's crazy. Um, uh, let's uh, take a break right yeah. now and uh, okay. pay some bills. Ooh. And uh, there's, we're gonna we got some music coming up right now from amazing artists down south. Shout out to Justin Case, the rapping grandpa, oh, and rapping. Blue grandpa, and Blue Raw. Yeah. We got some music coming from them right now. Some hot <laughs> shit. So stay tuned. And when we come back, we got. CJ the Terror yeah. live his on DTF Radio, his Brooklyn, New York, worldwide. You don't want to say something quick for the, the, the sports talk? Or no? no, not right now. All right, another time. All right. All right, so we got, we're going to have some uh, oh, commercial right here real quick. Yeah. And then we're going to hear some fire music from Justin Case, the rapping grandpa, wow. and Blue Raw, <laughs> wow. the South's finest. Oh, kill me. Let's get it. Oh. DTF Radio. You want to get your music played? Holla at us. All right. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, we lit, lit. Yeah, we lit, lit. This is me. <clears throat> this is ju- This is Blue Raw. We lit. Yeah, we lit, lit. 
is lit. Lit. Ooh. More lit than a beat. You know how it goes. Stacking this money and flipping these chips. Pockets on swole. Making it great. Watch it get lit. Yeah. Drop it. Yeah. Flow. Get em. Little mama show uh. me what you working with. Uh. We uh. get money, check the status. You know how I rock it. I'm in the trap. Out. Yeah. Nigga playing with the back end. I'ma come out with his noggin. Yeah. I keep that glizzy on me in traffic. While I whip my door to shop. Yeah. You can get parked wherever I shop. Make a nigga body pop like a drop. If I hit your bitch on the low. I will never, ever, ever tell another soul. She said for me and she know. Every time I hit that pussy, I'ma take a soul. Twerk song. Work song. I'ma keep throwing money. Pop song. Drop something. Tell her where you bring more money. Lit. Yeah, we lit, lit. It's lit, 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 lit. Ooh. Boy, I'm lit than a beat. You know how it goes. Stacking this money and flipping these chips. Pockets hot, swole. Making it rain. Watch it get lit. Drop it to the flow. Lil' mama, show me what you working with. Check out this amazing, amazing award shop called Balone Awards, where you could get your latest plaques, awards, everything else there, customized at 3324 Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. Their number is 718-252-2792. Their email is B-E-L-O-N-E-1 at yahoo.com. Check them out and show your support now. Come check out Vero G Spotlight Magazine at www.madcloud.com for all latest upcoming artists, actors, from everyone who wants to be on this amazing magazine for all independent people. Check it out now.
right now, your host, Bro G, co host The Loud Mouth, and DJ Chef. Yes, QB's future. Ow, ow, so, so, right now, we're on the artist spotlight segment, and we got one of my amazing friends, who I know for like, he just said over 15 years. 15 years yes. Shit, that's like, I'm, I'm like, I feel old, almost my age, but. We old, we old. Shh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. We all good. Uh, show love, show love. But um, yeah, he, he's an amazing guy. He's gonna tell the story in a few minutes. But uh, let me just real quickly let you guys know he he is a martial arts uh, instructor or student. I'm sure. Sure. Instructor. Okay. And, Watch um, out now. Be careful ow, now. Got those he's moves, y'all. Instructor. Yo. That's right. Ow. Watch out. Hey now. Um, <laughs> um, he is uh, also a Moral uh, College alumni. Shout out. Yes. Um, and he has so much to say. So let me give him the mic. And let them know, let the world know who is CJ the Terror. Go ahead. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is CJ the Terror. I was born and raised for the Boogie Down Bronx. Um, shout out to Monroe College um, for giving the influence and, and showing me how to speak. Because I was always hiding behind closed doors and always being like secluded and, and stuff like that. I want to give a big shout out to one of my mentors, my spiritual father out there. Dr. Jeffrey Smith, a.k.a. g Dogs, uh, but always telling me to speak my mind and talk about what goes on in life. Uh, basically, uh, me and Real G, we've known each other for many years. We met each other uh, through Monroe, and then uh, Little Man was, was taking the martial arts, and we used to be together in the class. We took uh, the young kids class, yeah. and then I would be in adult class, and we each other feed off, feed off each other in different tournaments, and stuff like that. Also, shout out to my, my crew down south, uh, Arkansas, Mississippi, AOBK, Grandmaster A-Train, Danny mm-hmm. Bowling, Grandmaster Jeff, Spano, uh, Jay, because uh, without them, listen, I won't be in my man martial arts. I was, I was almost came to a time last year of quitting martial arts. Wow, man. Um, I almost man. came up to quit wow. because uh, I went through a tough uh, examination yeah. Because I had to prove myself out in New York. I thought I had proved myself already um, as a martial artist, you know, going through the tournaments and stuff like that. I was told that I couldn't wear my black belts because I didn't go through a proper examination. Wow. So wow. I went through a proper examination, and at the end of the day, um, who I thought was my friend ended up hurting me and ended up fracturing my ribs. Wow. Bro. Sorry but, to hear that, yeah, man. Thanks, man. But they, they gave me mad love. Because um, those of you know we don't see each other time, we see each other on, on Facebook live yeah. a lot. And they're the ones that um Remus A train is the one that's giving a lot of historical aspect of what's going on with Black Lives Matter, him being a, a member of the Black Lives Matter community and being one of the community board members. Mm-hmm. And you know, so we talk a lot about this uh, aspect of um, the Black Lives Matter when it comes to um, I also have over 19 years of experience in law enforcement. Okay. I started, right. I started young. I was 18 years old. And I, I wanted to do something positive for my community. Um, so I got involved with the Barnes Hill Facility Police Department. And from there on, I moved on to security. And I became where I'm at now with, uh, as a police officer for the city. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, um, but we all have a story, you know. Mm. And, and I, I always say this. If it wasn't for my up, upbringing, yeah. right. I wouldn't be here right. today. Because, right. you know, everybody has an upbringing. And, and for those of us that grew up in the Bronx, mm-hmm. back in the days, you know, the, the early 80s, you know, they, um, let me give you uh, uh, some historical data here for you. Yeah. You got to look at this. We had, I grew up in a time where the crack epidemic was the height of New York City. Yes, it was. And we go, let, let, uh, let's look at some bad data here. Crack, mm-hmm. crack hit the streets in, 19, in the early 80s. Yes. The hype of the crack epidemic was 87 and it died down in 97 because of Giuliani. Giuliani, Reagan laws, and all these constitutional laws that came out to um, criminalize the, the crack. Wow. And crack and dope was both yeah. the same way. So that's what ended up happening with the, um, with the crack epidemic and stuff. So we growing up in, growing up in those times... Is it was kind of rough because yeah. you had the the Bronx was burning, you had abandoned buildings going um you know throughout the neighborhoods, you know I was privileged and blessed to live in a good neighborhood. I lived in a, in, in a blue uh blue collar neighborhood, a blue collar white collar neighborhood where we worked. But there was times that I seen the streets of the Bronx 
where you saw, you know, I had my family lived over in the South Bronx a lot, so we hung on the South Bronx, and we didn't see the drug dealings and and the killings and and the and the, the different aspects and, and coming from almost like a broken home type thing, wow. you know. And, and Monroe is where I put my life together. I, a lot of the life pieces was put together in, in Dr. Jeffrey Smith's class, and. Why I say he's my spiritual father because when I was seven years old, he saved my life because I used to play basketball with him and his and his and his youth group in that in those times, yeah. and we got back together later on because my mom ended up going to Monroe, and uh, when my mom was at Monroe, he was I was going to his classes with my mom's and you know cause we wait till the classes over we do something after class or whatever, so he said what do you want to do I said I, I don't know because you know I was told I couldn't go to college I couldn't do. Much because the Board of Ed told me that I had a learning disability, had a dyslexia. But he said, man, you, you know, don't let that defeat you. And I went to him with my portfolio, and I said, listen, I'm here to come here and get educated. And he, he helped me through many of my journeys in Monroe. And I loved him to death. I took every class with him because I, I wanted to learn and absorb him. And the true story is that I maybe took like nine classes with him. And out wow. of those nine classes, wow, I got one A. Literally, oh, man. only one A. He's I got a tough instructor. It's, it's yeah. tough. One yeah. the tough. The, the, wow. People used to tell me, oh, "But ain't you? Ain't you that, that's your boy?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's my boy." But in the classroom, he's the teacher. I'm the student, and I'm never asking him for no favors, doing nothing. And and to this day, it's like I can always call on him. Any student that had G Dog, you know that if if you shout out to him, may have been a while or two, whatever it is, he was always there to be a mentor. And he always told me, "Rivera, you know." He, he pushed me hard. That's why um, I came up with not my own system, but this is like something for me, you know, to express myself in martial arts. Yeah. And because I don't have nobody here in New York s- to support me. The only people that support me, like I said, AOBK, which is my martial art organization. Wow. Okay. They support me big time. And, you know, um, Smith told me back when I was, I remember one of his classes, he mentioned a word called Kaizen. And Kaizen means to always improve. So I took the Kaizen mentality of always improving yeah. and how it is to always improve in your life. So I always took that Kaizen mentality. So Kaizen Do means is, is, is the way. It's the way of how I can improve the art and how can I leave my footprint in the art. And the Bujitsu is basically the different styles of weapons that we have. I love the martial art weapons. Um, when I go to tournaments, I just love the different types of weapons from Okinawan, which is the, the size, the swords, the tonfas. Uh, sorry, no, the sword is not one, but sorry, the bow staff and stuff like that. I got and, a question about that. Yeah, they go by rankings when when you when you do weapons. Yeah, yeah. it go, when when it comes to tournaments, it goes by rankings, okay, and okay. and you have intermediate, me, intermediate, you got beginning, intermediate, and black belt or, or right. advanced. So okay. you got beginning, intermediate, and advanced. And um, it was funny, you know, me and my fiance was was hanging out one day, yeah. and we was going to Atlantic City, and one of the martial art uh, grandmasters bowed to me. And he said, "Whatever belt you wear, man, I, re- I love you, man, because you was willing to go. Wow. He, uh, you was willing to go into any tournament, any tournament, and go against anybody. And that's how that, that's, I, I, good. That, that's the attitude that's I had good. in life. Where it always was that I always shielded myself with a coat of arms. Like I always walked around with a different beat of my. Not because I was I was a great I am, was because you know I just wanted to shield myself because of all the insanity that was going around. Yeah. I seen so much insanity in my life. It's like." You know, I, I I always wonder. So I always thank God for the the blessings of being here, because you know, there's those martial artists out there in the community that if they hear you at a certain rank, yeah. they want to talk down to you. You don't believe in that rank. Oh, you know, you, you know, oh, you know, you don't deserve that rank. Or you don't. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a piece of cloth around your waist. And and every day you come in and 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 you strive forth in in life. Like, um, I, I may I may. I was blessed by my brother. He gave me a black belt in his system. Wow. And then when I got my last year, my test, and, you know, it was awesome getting a, a rank from him. That was one of the most blessings. And um, a few months later, that's when AOBK, um, Anthony, uh, Anthony um, Grandmaster A-Train, we call him Anthony A-Train, oh, wow. he, he hit me up. He said, listen, man, I'm going to bless you with a fifth-degree black belt because you wow. work so hard in martial arts, and I know you know the knowledge. You have the knowledge, man, and, and I'm, I want to give you – no, and then no money asked. These, this organization never asked me for no money, no donation, nothing. Most organizations in the martial art world, mm-hmm. if you want to move up to any ranking, will ask you to give a, 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 a amount of money. It could be between $600 to $1,000. Wow. 
to up to five thousand dollars, depending wow. on what type of organization. Some, wow. and this is and, and, and this is what goes on in martial arts. And I, I and I don't care. I'm gonna get you know, you know, people need to hear what goes on in martial arts yes. because Spinning at the end of, at the end of the day, you talk about Black Lives Matter. There's there's racism in martial arts as well. I mm. believe and, that. And it, it comes from that. your own brother. Like my brother A Train, they denounce this man so much. But mm. when you hear his wisdom, right. you know what I'm saying? He's been in arts since 1978. A, a, a veteran, you know, a Purple Heart veteran that lost his arm in combat, almost died twice. Wow. And wow. still doing his thing in the martial arts with one arm. God bless him. That means something, man. It means something. Then you got Grandmaster Danny Bolden that been in the arts since 1980s. Shit. But because they're down south, nobody res- rep- want to respect them. Yeah. It's the same thing here in United in New York. Like It goes with, 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 with everything in, in life, with education, anything in education. That's right. You speak your mind or you speak about something, they quickly want to belittle you because they think you know it all. But instead of you opening up your wisdom and opening up your ears and opening up your eyes to hear what goes on, you know, it's like, come on. It's, it's a constant battle. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know what? Sometimes it's good to stay silent. You know, and, and I, 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 I live by these three key components that I try to implement in my life is, you know, never let your mind be frozen for one of the books I read. And meaning that you never want your, li- you never want your mind to be stuck. Keep your mind constant going. If you don't, if you think that you don't, that something is, is wrong in this world, or you think that what the information you're getting, look it up. Look it up. You know, you people say YouTube is wrong, but you could get sued for putting the mis, misguided information on YouTube. Yes. People don't know you could yeah. get sued for for putting misguided information on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They're very strict now too. So they're strict yeah. now. So now you gotta be. So now you gotta be careful what kind of content. So never let your mind be frozen. Let your mind be like a frozen river, constantly learning, learning new tools in life. And that's why I think about what goes on in today's society that a lot of these youths, they, they need the guidance. Yeah. They need somebody out there that's going to sit there. And also as a youth, sit there with an empty cup. Mm, right? See. see, empty cup meaning that don't come in there with a full cup. Sit there with an empty cup. And when the cup is full of the wisdom, drink the wisdom and say, I want some more. Take more of the wisdom that there is out there. And then another one is that we deal with negativity and all this that in the world. Bullies and all this that goes on. Mm-hmm. They throw stones at you. Oh, another, God, yes. So yes. take them stones and build yourself an empire. That's it. Take That's them it, same man. stones and build. And this, and this is a quote that I read a while back on Facebook. And I, I, I run with it because I don't know where the author came from. Um, I hope the person is listening. Oh. Whoever came up with this, this <laughs> quote, it's, it's an awesome quote because... It's how it is in life. Yeah. Because we all come from a foundation. We all come yes, from somewhere. That's right. No matter where we come from, the hardships of the Bronx, or the, whatever you come from, the Lower East Side, or you come from Queens, or come from Brooklyn, or come from Staten Island, you know, we all got a story to say. That's right. And the, and the hardships of every day's life, you know, you know, seeing what goes on, like the Renaissance in the Bronx and all this. There's some parts of the Bronx I remember in my head that was so bad mm. that now it's like, wow, like OMG. Like, I can't believe that this is going on in the Bronx, you know. And, and it's it's amazing to see where, you know, I, I was, I'll go to, I'll walk to 183rd sometimes, you know, in that area. I remember that area being a very heavily drug neighborhood and very hot spot of drugs and, and activities. And to see that the neighborhood is kind of changing but not changing where we wanted to change. But eventually it will change. It will be gendified again. There's a lot of things that's going on that it will be changed. And to go through life struggles in life, you know, every day is a life struggle. Yes. You know, every day is going to be a life struggle. Every, every, you're not going to have that perfect moment, that perfect day. And that's how we got to live as, as today as well with the cold covert, the whole black lies that's going on right now. You know, we, we have to be... Like they say, you have to be used to taking the changes, adapt to the change like a chameleon, adapt to the changes in everyday life that goes on. Exactly. You know, so it's like, you know, even with the police department, like now, me being an officer, I have to change now to the times that we're living in. We got to go, we, we got to get back to where we was before. Mm. We need to get out the patrol cars. Let's get back into going, playing double dutch playing basketball, football, there it's out there. 
I mean, it's a blessing. I'm seeing on social media, these uh, somebody called 911 while these kids playing football, mm. and the cops went out there to play football. And it was some part of Atlanta, Georgia, where these kids were running around, and the, they challenged the cops on a race, and the cops went out there to race with them. Mm. Officers, we need to go out there and do that again. Build bonds with the communities. and, 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 I, and I seen that up here in New York. I seen cops come out and get on the basketball court and play. And you you be inspired by seeing how good and how they interact with people. Yes. yes. You know, instead of seeing the outside parts of them getting cuffed, getting people getting cuffed, you see them interacting with, with, with the people. That's good. It's very good. And, and, and that's the thing. When I, when I was auxiliary, when I was auxiliary in New York City, that's one thing that I used to love. I used to love patrolling the neighborhoods. I'll go to the local parks and, and, and go out there and, and try to have some fun with the kids. And they'll look at me like, like what? Like, yeah, let me pass me the ball, you know. Or, or, you and, know. And, they, they need, and we need to see that because it yeah. shows that y'all care. Yeah. It shows that, you know, NYB, who, who, they show that, it, that they care, yeah. you know. It's not always about, oh, you know, they bad. No, it shows them that they care. And they care about the community because at the end of the day, they from the community too, so, okay. and and, and, that, and that's an aspect of it. Like the PAL, you know, needs to come back again. Where, yes, where it needs to. I grew up with it, that. It, it, yeah. it needs to come I, back where, yes. where, where it's, it needs to come back strong, like it was in the days when I was growing up, where the Same PAL, here. where the PAL would shut down certain neighborhoods, yes. and everybody would come together and play ball and, and everything else. Because right. you gotta understand this. Not and I and I'm gonna say this to the truth, and I'm not showing support. I know there's all there's officers out there that are negative. We know that. Yeah. Mm. But let's look at the bright side of officers that go out there every day and and put their life on the line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There are officers out there that put their life on the line to save those. That's so right. to you know and you know, it's just sad that the negativity is put out there. Yeah. And uh, me and Chef were talking earlier about yeah. that. Yeah. And we were talking about how, you know, I, I, I disagree with a lot of things that goes on that goes on, but you know, it's sad because it's the poor training. Mm. It's the lack of training that there is. And I'm going to say it out there, and I don't care. I'm going to say it, it's lack of training out there. Because at the end of the day is that you teach us how to de- de-escalate verbally, yeah. but what about de-escalation tactically? Exactly. Like, there's a, a martial organization called the Gracie Family, which I was watching mm. a YouTube video. And they have a video. Of, for those that want to look at this video, they talk about de-escalation tactically. Interesting. And what is that? They they work with Las Vegas deeply police department, and there's a video out there where they train the Las Vegas department on a tactical takedown, and the officer was struggling, but he maintained control throughout the whole situation. So if you train the officers properly and get a proper instructor in the in those facilities to train the officers the right way, we won't have what's going on right now. You know, we won't have these 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 incidents where mistakes are being made and, and a, a, a person's life is being taken. Because I, I, I honestly, I don't know how you can sleep at night if you take somebody's life. That's huh. right. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? I don't know how you can sleep at night. You know, I remember when when and I tell you the truth be told, a couple of years ago on Thanksgiving, yep. it was on Thanksgiving Day. I was on patrol with my partner. We were about to go on break. We get a call of an unconscious male. Me and my partner worked on this mail, this this uh, one of our residents for almost like 15, 16 minutes. Wow. With with EMS, EMS shows up, they take him to the hospital, and then you know I get one of the staff members bring me to the office, say, "Hey, Rivera, he didn't make it," and that was the first time I ever cried wow. in uniform. Oh my god! I had to get it in the office because I, I never I never showed any emotions, but wow. took the first time to show emotion because of how much we try to work to bring this man alive, back alive. Damn. And then to have his family come and, you know, pick up his property and stuff like that. Mm. But, you know, it's, it happens in a daily basis, you know. And then when it comes to officers, you know, you need to find an outlet sometimes. Don't bring the stresses home. That's right. You know, I, I thank God for martial arts. I thank God for a lot of people in my circle that if I got a bad day or have a, a day that, it just didn't go. It went left. I have someone I can call or someone I could be with to support, you know. And you know, the whole COVID nineteen is like it, it's it's it derailed me too because the martial arts has been my outlet. Wow. You know, like I, I go into the, the dojo with um 
one of my 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 closest friends and, and I consider my uncle martial arts. I forgot to shout him out. Oh. Um, <laughs> my my good dear friend Grandmaster Thunderfist Lopez. Mm. Um, he's been running uh, a martial art organization for over sixty years. Wow. The organization been going on for sixty years, and he still keep it going in, 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 the, in the in the in the the heart of the South Bronx. You know, Thunderfist Academy, and and I will go there, and, and he will let me train with him. I'm not even a part of his organization or his school, but he'll let me go in there and even bring my daughter in. Shout out to my daughter, too. Tough cookie. Tough cookie Katie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she, she's into the arts, man. She saw me in a tournament, and she's into the arts. So we go in there and train, and I'll go in there and have a bad day. And sometimes my fiance will be like, babe, you all right? So I'm fine. I'm going to go to the dojo. I'm going to go do something or, you know, go do a tournament and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, but um, it's 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 awesome, man. And, and, and to see where... I got I a question. From. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, man. You. Go ahead, man. Cool. Let me ask you a question. Now, yeah. I don't see tournaments. Now, I don't know. I've seen the thing. Is there such thing called um, a part where they call it's called breaking? Yeah. And you, you have to break the bricks. Yeah. Now, is that is is it really true that you do that to level up mm. in in the, in a division, or is it for? To, to win a match or something. Well, it depends what comes board breaking. Board breaking is supposed to symbolize you of breaking somebody's body. Oh, wow. Right. So, okay. so it depends what type of boards you break. And it's supposed to be the more the thicker the board, the more you could probably break somebody's bones in case so, if so it's a, in the self defense aspect of it. So, board breaking and brick breaking is two different things. No, it's both the same. But the thing is, it's just that the, the, the more intensity there is of it, like say, if you break bricks and and I, say I break bricks and you break wood, I'm gonna get first place in breaking bricks. You're gonna get first. You're gonna get second place in breaking boards. Wow! Because it all depends yeah. on that, yeah. and 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 that's where it goes to the aspect again when it comes to like the arts and all that. You know, getting back to where you know people always ask me where does CJ Terra come from, and I gotta give that's, you know you know someone will always ask me that, and yeah, I told people and and, and what it was, I had a I had a counselor back in the days, and they were getting mad at me because m- my family called me Pito. Mm-hmm. Or Papito. And they'll say, yo, what's your middle name? It's Jay. And they say, oh, what are you calling yourself CJ? I'm like, nah, I don't like that CJ, man. I like my Pito nickname. But when I got into the arts, one day me and my brother was in a tournament. My brother, um, shout out to my brother, he has um, five schools in Puerto Rico. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's called um, Puerto Rican Martial Arts Academy out there in Puerto Rico. And my brother, um, Hector Cabez, is, is, is um, the head president. Mm. And we were driving somewhere in Puerto Rico. I don't remember what it was. And he said, I got to give you a name, bro, because you come into my tournament. And I'm like, okay, so what are you, what are you thinking of? So he said, Teristo. I said, Teristo? What the hell does Teristo mean? <laughs> and he said, well, what we call when you scare somebody? The terror. Terror, right. So he said, all right, we got it, the terror. I said, okay, you know what? We're going to put CJ the terror. So then mm. that's where CJ the terror came from. And I always try to live up that name because my brother gave me the name. And, and being, uh, uh, we all come from different moms with St. Paul's. And um, I had, that's a name that I always loved because my brother gave it to me. So it's like you know. Um, other question I gotta yeah, ask. Yeah. Um, tell the viewers. Tell everybody. Can we watch your viewings of your your matches or teachings? Mm. Well, the the thing with the the like I, that's that's a good question. Cause I, would, I mean, because I would love to see some some of the matches. Is it on YouTube? Is there any way I can see see this? Well, he hey, wants to check his stuff out. Oh, li- <laughs> okay. Here, here, here go. Here it goes. You I'm got a, me. You got me really interested. Listen, bro. Like, uh, serious. Uh, definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. Like. What goes on? Let me break down this. Let me break down the tournaments to you. If and let me break down to you real quick, and, and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it out. I'm gonna put a spotlight on on, on the sports karate world right now. Ooh. In the sports karate world, if you're not a part of a team, organization, or sponsor, you don't get any play. Gotcha. Right. And I've been I've been my own self promoter. Gotcha. All right. I was a part of Rorishi Goju, and um in Puerto Rico. Okay. All right, I was a part of that system, and I left it because I felt like I wasn't getting representative. I wasn't getting love. I wasn't right. getting respected. Right. So I left them. But when it comes to if you're not on that elite level, you're not getting no play. Hmm. So it's sad because I'll give you a true story, and I'm going to put it out there. When I was an underbelt, underbelt meaning under black belt, in um, KTOX, which is the, the, the second largest martial arts tournament in New York City, wow. right, in Queens. For almost five years, I was going there. Yeah. Out of those five years, I took first place in weapons. Mm. Wow. Five, five years. 
And I, I, I even put, I, I put it out there with the trophies and all that of five years of me being um, first place, you know, in that division. You know, and, and, and then sometimes I win first place in, in, in Carter's, but never got no play on it. But I didn't mind because at the end of the day, I know I wasn't a part of a team. I wasn't part of a sponsorship. So that's why I came up with my own way of martial arts, where I came up with my own thing. I always trained on my own. I always pay for my own. Well, not on my, I didn't never pay for my own seminars. I've been blessed that my sponsorship came from my loved ones. Shout out to my mother, my aunt, mm. my fiance right here, um, you know, May. Aww. You know, she she sponsored me. She's back, you know, <laughs> you know, and you know, everybody in my family supported me. That's I never had no support. That's if I needed to support myself in the arts, I worked doubles. I would work twenty two hours, you know, overtime just to go support myself in the martial arts. I never had no no backing, and the only people that's backing me right now is ALBK. My, my and the sad part was, and I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna tell you what broke my heart and what, what I was my second reason why I almost left the arts was, I had a sensei or a teacher, mm-hmm. up and leave me, what I've been telling wow. me. I found out through Facebook. That hurts, and it hurted me that because hurt, it felt like a, it felt like my father leaving me, because I wanted to grow with this person. Right, wow. and then you know. Telling me, oh, yeah, I'm gonna come, come see you. I set up everything at this one spot for you to come down and we could train or whatever for one last time. Yeah. And he ended up leaving me. So I respect that he gave me the belt. I respected that he allowed my father to bless the belt. And then that was one moment where me and my father had closure because me and my father we had a, uh, we didn't have a great father and son relationship. We now yeah. have one. Wow. Me and my mom has a solid mother and son relationship besides what goes on. But when it comes, but the martial arts is, is, and law enforcement and family is what has kept me in the straight path of life. That's good, man. But That's when good, it comes man. to the tournaments and stuff like that, um, I, I I have that same question at work. I had a coworker at work ask me, well, "How can we see your videos? We want to see what you yeah. do." Yeah. And I said, "It's sad because some of my videos I never. Some people recorded me and they sent it to my 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 phone, and sometimes I never had. I would go by myself." I'll go compete, get up at 5. Sometimes I'll get up at 5 in the morning and get on the train because I never had no, I don't have no vehicle. I travel anywhere up and down the East Coast. I, I, I'm, I'm my, like I said, I'm my own self-promoter when it came to the martial arts. And I promoted a lot of tournaments out there that these people um, supported, like Bagwell, K-Tox, um, um, King of New York. Whoever had a tournament, I was there to represent, you know, my school, Rorishi Goju. And it was sad that I never got love from the school. When the yeah. Grand Master would come to New York, he would never want to train with me. But when he would go to Chile, Venezuela, or some other country, he would train with them. Mm. You know, and then when it comes to law enforcement, like I said, I'm, I, I'm just blessed that to have a martial art community, have my family, because law enforcement, is, it's a hard job, man. Yeah. It's not an easy job. And what we're going through right now, man, it's hard because, you know, it's like we lost a public trust because of, of actions of, of, of several men. And it's it, we need to bring that back. I don't know how we're gonna do it. I, I, defunding the police is is one way of not doing it for me because, you know, do, you, now you taking the resources that was keeping the crime down in New York City is going back up again. I was looking at statistics last year. Yeah. Around this time, we had eighty nine shootings. Damn. We up to two hundred and ten shootings right now, That's because crazy. there's seven hundred officers he took off the streets. I mean, you want to defund the police? Fine, but I think we don't need that right now. We need to figure out cooler heads need to sit down with all these leaders, these community groups. Let's sit down with a powwow and say, what do we need? What do you want to be done? You know, better training? Okay, then we got to find some way to revamp the training, revamp the, the community, bring back the community together. That's true. You know, and, and you know, that's why I, I you know, I, I say that to say, you know, it's, it's hard, man, you know, Fine. you know. Um, I, I would love to be here another hour, man. I would listen. This guy has a lot of. I want to just this applause to you, Jesus Terry, just being yeah. on here. And he told us a lot tonight. With wait, yeah. I know some of his stuff behind, like as friends and stuff. I seen him work before, but it's an eye opener, you know. From like you said, you know what you've been in before in the yeah. past and everything. Yeah. And I just want to thank you and I commend you, man. Yeah, you know that's definitely. Definitely, definitely. Thanks, thanks for letting me come out here and speak You're my welcome. voice and 
You know, I do this sometimes at Dr. Smith's class a lot. Awesome. I, I, I say, I got to come out here and, and spread, spread the word, man, cause, you know. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, before we get out of here, um, let them know where your social media, where they can find you. Oh, for, once again, you can find me on Facebook at CJ the Terror, uh, Instagram as well, C, um, CJ the Terror 61. Um, you can find me there uh, if you want. I don't have a dojo. I have nothing else to do free. I will do women's self-defense with you guys. On the so any woman want to learn some self-defense out there, contact me. And um, we can set men up like something out there. Maybe uh, we'll men get, like to learn self maybe we'll Okay, get, whatever works, man. Maybe we'll get you in a different ring. Uh, maybe professional hey, wrestling. Oh, oh let's see what happens, man. Let's see. Let's see. Wow. I don't I, know. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm a producer for a wrestling fed, so we'll, oh, we'll no, 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 no he was an amateur wrestler, and he used to be on a lot of the shows of WWE Raw. He was on a lot of the shows with Raw just to bring him in. So I commend the amateur wrestlers. I used to see man. them bruises, man. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, Professional man. wrestlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwbacks, throwbacks. yeah, yeah. But um, right. thank you so much again, CJ. So yeah. Terrence, clap it out for him. Bye. Boogie down the house. Boogie down. Let me get that. It is on yeah. work today. Oh, crap. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. Find yeah. Time. Boogie Let's down. Boogie down. All right, That's so right. we're going to end the show now. Yes. We'll be back here live next week, every single Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. We got Artist Sassoon next week. I'm excited to see him here. Do it out there. All right, we're yes. going to close out the show yes. with Quan the Bully. Yes. Bully Hi, Mafia everybody. Music. I got five on it. That's right. Let's get it. The video's on YouTube. It's worldwide. All right, Look bye, it up. Everybody. J Empire Media. Thank you, guys. Next week. <laughs> bye. All right. Bully. You know the vibes? Let's get high. If I got five and you got five, then we could both get high. Smoking on this Mary Jane, listening to Mary Jane. I got five on the galaxy, blog kush to the universe. Pen and pad in hand, smoking cherry pop out the festus verse. Backwoods played out, niggas like what we gon' do. Going back in time and get this honey bourbon 82. Been a Dutch master for years, going down memory lane. GG pack mixed with the perp, call it banana hate. Let my wife taste the wedding cake, she was so amazed. Told her we gon' name my daughter Mary Joanna Jane. Young fleet girl, Louis V with them sporting 82. What a LV got me flying. I like joy, cheesecake, cookies being big. That's what the God craved. Wiz told me to burn after I roll, so I won't miss, miss my plane. plane. Show and tell with me. Mac it with the Brody X. Flip a whole beer gelato and get another zip. Then this cherry pie got me smacked. I need another guy. True, what you got up on the loose, huh? If I got five and you got five, and we could both get high. Smoking on this Mary Jane, listening to Mary Jane. If I got five and you got five, then we could both get high. Smoking on this Mary Jane, listening to Mary Jane.